Welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. We are back here with Dr. Arnold Chung. And with this video, I really wanted to touch on a lot of questions from the community directly. I asked you, the community, multiple questions. Uh, you know, anything that you would like to ask a surgeon related to surgical technology. Uh, and a lot of you students out there had quite a few good questions. So let's, let's go through these. So. This was one of the biggest questions sure. and you know, a question that had like the most likes mm -hmm. and it was, what would you recommend a tech do if they had never done surgery with you? If you have, you know, a, a tech mm -hmm. coming in there that you don't know that you haven't worked with before, mm -hmm. maybe they don't know the surgery. I think what would be you... comfortable for me is first introduce yourself, you know, yeah. tell your name and look them in the eye yeah. and say, this is who I am and yeah. my training. Uh, let them know I haven't done this procedure before, but I've been uh, briefed on it. I have your cart here. Yeah. Uh, please just be patient with me in terms of mm -hmm. you know what you need, um, and uh, I'll do the best I can. Um, and you know, it's just like any other relationship. It's just yeah. you know based on transparency. You know, being upfront. Um, and I would honestly wear your hard hat. You know, because. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be rough, you're gonna get and some crap you're gonna you. get you're gonna get you're, you're gonna you know and it's and try not to interpret it as him not liking you or her not liking you or yeah. or like some type of personal thing. Yeah, it's just again as we tell, said on the other video. I mean, you know, we're all of us in that room are under a certain degree of stress. Yes, but the surgeon yes. bears the brunt of it because yes. he's responsible for this patient's life. You like know you said I mean? before, he's the tip yeah. of the spear. Tip of the spear and the therefore the spear. They, they have to stay sharp. Yeah. And sometimes the sharpness can cut you guys yeah. too, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. so, so wear your hard hat, try not to take things personally. I know I see you all the time writing things down. Yeah. You all have smartphones. Yeah. So and all of them have notes functions. Yeah. So there's absolutely no reason for you not to have a file on each of the surg surgeries at, yeah. or uh, you know or whatever a general yeah. notepad that you can write things down on. Yep. Which uh, you should refer to. That goes along I mean? with nursing students, mm -hmm. residents, all that type of stuff. You can easily easily write notes. Absolutely. What's your what's your biggest concern with uh, with the tech you haven't worked with before? You know, like when you walk into the OR and don't recognize mm -hmm. somebody, what would be your initial concern? Like, my who, base, who the, who the heck is this? Yeah, my <laughs> base concern is not so much from a technical standpoint, yeah, because that can be learned and that can be trained. Yeah, my base concern is the level of concern. Yeah, like the level of care. Yeah. Like, how much does this person care yeah. about this person that we're about to? Is everyone's personality is different? Yes, in, in, uh, in the we're way about they, to. Yeah. do a procedure on yes yeah. now it's very dangerous for me to peer into someone's psyche and make a judgment uh, you don't care yeah. and then and then I really shut down on that person you know what yeah. I mean like if I can tell oh you know if they're giving me sass yeah then you know I'm not just gonna talk to them I'm gonna talk to the OR director and say listen yeah. this is not acceptable do something or or that person's out you yeah know? Um, so I, it's the tude, it's the attitude. It's the you know, it's the attitude. You know, the technical skills, the knowledge. Of course, I don't expect someone who hasn't done the procedure before yeah. to, um, you know, to have that facility. You know, that situation. It'd be great if someone like you were in the room there, kind of with, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of just like yeah. taking the mentor role and yeah. saying, listen, this is how you know Dr. Chung likes to do this part. So yeah. get that ready. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. So. Uh, that can go a lot of way to alleviate the suffering. So if we had like a, say we had like a surgical tech student in the yeah. room, uh, one of the things that would technically impress you would be someone that would, you know, ask questions. Sure. At so, appropriate so, times. Someone, at appropriate yeah, times, yeah, yeah, but yeah. someone that is, that you can tell is genuinely interested in sure. what you're doing. Sure. And not just being like a fly right. on the wall. Right. Type deal. So one of the things that I, lo I really appreciate about you is that, you know, you're not one of those guys that sets up the room and then you're in your scrubs and you're sitting down, you know, while, you know, the patient's getting ready. Yeah. You are off and break scrub, you're getting the patient on the table, yeah. you know, you're, um, you know, tucking arms, yeah. you know, that type of thing. You're helping with the flow of the case. Yeah. That does annoy me a little bit when the tech is just sitting, you know, right by the Mayo stand or whatever, you know, the, the, the oh, setup. They stay, stay scrubbed. They in stay scrubbed just, while the patient there. is, and they're just, you know, and, you know, I mean, if there are four or five people in the room taking care of the patient, fine. Yeah. We, you know, you don't need extra hands. Yeah. But oftentimes you're going to find yourself short staffed. Yeah. And your, your surgeon notices things. He may not notice them explicitly, but he notices it, mm -hmm. you know, when 
and he'll notice it on, on his time, you know, when, you know, a half hour turnover, it's taking 45 minutes yeah. to an hour and yeah. and then he's seeing that now yeah. again if you're a short staff you know he, he should make some allowances but yeah. if you're not you know then um, you know we should uh, you know it's all about like how can we make this better yeah. how can we make this better yeah and uh, that's an attitude that can be cultivated and can be expected yeah but the it's the sweetest and it's the best when it like naturally comes out of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Just like Absolutely. Yeah, like like I can imagine as a father when your son like picks up on his room and you never mm -hmm. tell him that, you know, he picks up the room cuz he likes like, it to be neat. Walk in there and yeah. I'm like, wow. Yes. <laughs> and that makes you really like uh like wow. Yeah. I, I've done something right because yeah. this guy wants to do it on his own. Yeah. You know, it's not me yeah. whip cracking the whip. No, it's true. You know, and we don't like to crack the whip if we don't have to, but yeah. we will. Yeah. God damn it, we will. <laughs> we will crack the freaking whip if if things are not going the way that that they they yeah. would think they ought to be yeah. going. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of your more progressive viewers are, oh, that's paternalistic, and you know, oh, that's just like the patriarchy, blah blah blah. Hey, listen, I don't care if it's a man or a woman. If they're a surgeon, they want this patient to have the best outcome possible, and yeah. that means a tight freaking ship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can have fun, but fun comes after. All boxes are checked. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that, yeah. and I've said this before in many videos. That really comes down to working together as a team in the OR. Uh, working as a team in the OR is absolutely paramount. You know, you can't just have individual jobs. The nurse does this. The tech mm -hmm. does this. You really have to mesh together well mm -hmm. and work together in the OR to just make everything run smooth throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. One thing I would tell your listeners is that. Um, a lot, of, a lot of times, uh, you're doing the best you can mm -hmm. from your perspective. Yeah. You know, like you said, yeah. like kind of covering multiple bases. Yeah. Like you're a shortstop, you're covering second and third, kind of, you yeah. know, that way. Um, and you're working real hard, and you see others that don't. Mm -hmm. And a lot of resentment starts to build up. It you know, happen. kind of like interpersonal happen. things. Like this guy is like, yeah. I mean, he's just sitting yeah. paint, playing Candy Crush, and yeah. you know, he's not, you know, participating you know yeah. what I mean yeah and I understand that totally yeah um, but uh, for your sanity mm -hmm. for your mental health mm -hmm. you got to like either I don't know how exactly how to deal with that resentment but you have to it has to be dealt with in a healthy way yeah or else yeah. that's like the seeds of like you know you want like you said a team but a team doesn't work really well if they don't like each other it's you true. know what i mean Except they have to like true. each other on some certain level yeah. and if you've got these resentments and these like hurts you know i don't know maybe you're just talking to them directly that type of thing you know yeah. you know yeah i think uh i think you know they start off as i've said i've said multiple times before in other videos too that you have a lot of different personalities that you have to mesh with in the mm -hmm. or and that you have to work closely with mm -hmm. and you know, what could be an annoyance one day could turn into a resentment or hate, mm -hmm. hate towards someone if it's mm -hmm. ongoing mm -hmm. and it continues on throughout your career mm -hmm. with that person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, like you said, it's, it's yeah. important to, I don't know, make it vocalize it to that person, maybe tell them how you feel yeah. or, you know, wish, wish, yeah. wish that they would, you know, help, help be, out with certain things a little bit more. Be very careful with that because, yeah. um, you know, certain people will not take it well. Yeah. Um, and you know it's so individual and this is probably beyond the scope of this video but it's so individual and you have to it is you know approach it correctly because you don't want to inflame the situation you know what i mean yeah so maybe that's a like a separate video it's hard yeah it's yeah. it's yeah. that's a tough one that's a that's a hard because it's so that's individual hard, right it's it is so it individual. is very individual yeah, yeah it is yeah. very individual case by case yeah it's not like a 12-step thing you know no. it's a case by case no, yeah. definitely yeah definitely what are some of your biggest pet peeves that others do in surgery? Mm, well, you, you, um, mentioned, you mentioned not helping out initially. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a, a, a general attitude of oh, you know, this is just my job, and therefore I don't have to really pay attention. It's the yeah. surgeon's job to pay attention. It's, yeah. it's all our job to pay attention. Yeah. So many times, an alert scrub person has yeah. prevented me from making a mistake. Yeah. Biggest examples are leaving foreign bodies in the patient's body cavities. Yep. An alert person who does account precisely, yeah. reliably every time can yeah. save your career, yeah. save my career. Yeah. So, you know, um, 
you know, like in, 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 in martial arts, there's a concept of being rigid enough to, you know, cause damage, but loose enough to move freely. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't be so tight yeah. that you're you're unable to, you know, move freely and think freely. Yeah. But you can't be so loose that you're not following the protocols. You yeah. know what I mean? There's that balance, you know, uh, be, yeah. between those, you analogy. know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so that, this is active supple rigidity i should i guess that's yeah. a bit like a supple rigidity that's a, you know is able to mm -hmm. kind of morph based upon the needs of the case mm -hmm. uh other pet peeves just you know things i don't like it when you guys turn your back to the patient yeah. you know i you know <laughs> that's that's just a, a thing i don't enjoy i don't like yeah. that of course sometimes think, you have to i think to. every surgeon hates that you, you have to <laughs> because you got to deal with stuff over here but you know keep that in mind when you're positioning your tables yeah. you know make it so that you don't have to do that or you can minimize that you know as much as possible yeah um other pet peeves hmm. um music's too loud that's a pet peeve um I think that I, one of the other pet peeves is that when you know there, there's you are there, so you know the ebb and flow of the surgery. You're at the bedside, yeah. You so you know the ebb and flow of the surgery. Yeah. The people who are you know just the, the nurses that are you know we're in cruising altitude, yeah, so to speak, and yeah. they're just chilling and yeah. a lot of them are on their phones and stuff like that. And most of the time it doesn't bother me because things are going nicely and I just like I'm just doing the surgery. Yeah. But oftentimes when things are starting to get a little bit more intense, yeah. as we're encountering problems that weren't yeah. anticipated, yeah. it annoys me when you know the staff is not attuned. Yeah. You know they're not attuned to the gravity of this, the mounting gravity of the situation. I you know, yeah. and then and then when you know, the, the fit hits the shan, yeah. you know, and then I'm starting to scream. Yeah. Then they snap to attention. Yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, I've been struggling for the last hour and exactly. only now are you, are you in DEF CON 1? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've been DEF CON 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And you haven't been with me. You it's know been, what I mean? It's been ramping exactly. up. This hasn't just happened it, No, exactly. <laughs> and that's like, it shows me a lack of essay. Yeah. You know what essay is? Uh, situational awareness. Situational and awareness. And everybody's yeah. got to be situationally aware Absolutely. in the OR. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I, I love it when the nurse comes around toward the anesthesia head and just, you know, takes a look and say, hey, what's going on? Everything yeah. cool? Mm, see, see, great. Where, see where you're at. It takes surgery. two seconds. Hey, everything's cool? Yep, we're cool. You know, and it yeah. just sits back down, gets back on her phone, whatever. You know what I mean? Totally I, agree. With you. But, you know, it's just, uh, you know, when, when people are not situationally aware, it means they don't care. Yeah. That's the way I interpret it. That's and it may be blunt. And it may be not, oh, no, we care, we care. Well, show me you care. Yeah. You know, show me that you actually care. Yeah. Don't tell me. You know, exactly. Show, show me. me. Exactly. Show me that you care. Yeah. You know, so. And, you know, those little things, you don't think they make a difference? They do. They do because that tells, you know, as I, I'm very aware of how people are feeling, you know, during the case. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm aware of my partner, my first assist. Yeah. I'm aware, like, ah, this is a... Bitch of a case. <laughs> this is a bear. It's a freaking case, <laughs> and everyone's like their heads are down. You know, it's just yeah. like we're fighting, we're fighting, we're yeah. fighting, and so I have to bolster that. You know, yeah. I have to you know get people on board and say, listen, let's persevere. You know, yeah. we can get this. Yeah. And oftentimes it's you guys encouraging me because I feel like that. You know, the yeah. lead dog, the it lead goes, mush. It goes, it goes back and forth. Absolutely, it goes absolutely. Back and, forth. and the lead musher is like, you're like, oh, this sucks. This yeah. sucks. This sucks. <laughs> You say, you know, hey, and you you're always coming with great ideas to make things easier. Yeah. And so, yeah. so that's I mean, that's like, I wouldn't say the highest level of your job, yeah. but it's definitely near there. Yeah. It's definitely near there where yeah. you are. You're saying, oh, I have these tools. This guy's struggling. You know, why can't we use these tools? Yeah. Right. And yeah, it's fantastic. I think that's that's something unique to the surgical tech because you know we do have the opportunity to work in many other specialties so we get to deal with a lot of different other types of mm -hmm. supplies and instrumentation and mm -hmm. stuff like that that you may not have ever mm -hmm. even seen mm -hmm. so we're in a unique position to where you know we're able to bring other things from other specialties in mm -hmm. uh, to, to assist in mm -hmm. you know, certain procedures. Yeah it's great it's yeah. great yeah you guys see it that what you know I'm, I don't ever see yeah yeah. yeah, so it's great. So, uh, stress stress is a real thing in the OR. Yes. How do you how do you calm yourself down, and how can how can a tech or a nurse, you know, any other any other person in that OR assist in mm. in helping uh, keep that stress level down in a procedure? I know I know this. There's really no way around it. You know, if a procedure kind of turns left, and, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, isn't isn't really going as planned, yeah. but. 
Yeah. You know, I, I, I just personally, I just get up and I walk around a little bit, take deep breaths. Yeah. Um, I'm always asking for feedback from my first assist from you guys yeah. on how to accomplish and solve problems better. Um, and you just, uh, you just realize I have to do this. Yeah. You know, I have to do this. Has to get done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no, there's no, you know, alternative. Now, uh, if you prepared the patient properly mm -hmm. and you prepare the staff properly and prepare your own mind properly you will know the outcomes mm -hmm. you know and sometimes an incomplete surgery is not a failure it's part of the of the sur potential surgical outcomes yeah you re you know you know um someone who has bad lung function mm -hmm. you can't take out a, lot of, out a lot of lung or they're going to have a hard time breathing yes. so we're going to do like a wedge resection and that's all we can do it's yeah. just a, it's, it's kind of an incomplete way to deal with it yeah. but you're still you're doing the best you can so you within the boundaries can, yeah right have a diagnosis right for the, for the patient right right so you're accomplishing something of yeah. value yeah. but understanding that you know we're not doing a complete what we would normally do under normal circumstances yeah. you know what i mean so so under again situational awareness yeah and the supreme situational awareness not supreme but the highest level on the human level is in the surgeon's mind mm -hmm. because they understand the algorithm like i can do this and get away with it. i can do this and get away with it here's the yeah. best thing i can do here's the worst thing i can do but it's all within the realm of acceptability yeah things that are out this way you know those are the things we have to avoid yeah you know what i mean yeah so so um yeah. You know, I guess you could alleviate your stress by understanding what the winning conditions are going to be. Mm -hmm. The what the you know how can we win? Mm -hmm. You know, on, in this surgical encounter, mm -hmm. most of the times it can be very obvious what what it means to win. It's going to be get the gallbladder out. Yeah, you know, it's going to be stop the bleeding. Yeah, it's going to be get rid of the infection. Yeah. You know, sometimes not quite so obvious. You know, and it, when it's not obvious to yeah. you guys, you communicate. So what are we doing again? Like, how can we feel? Like how? how like what are the end goals of this thing? Yeah. You know, and yeah. so so if you accomplish this, that means we're good. Yeah. Yep, we're good, and we don't have to go any further. Yeah. You know that type of thing. Yeah. And a lot of times, understanding that sometimes surgical, like you said, is diagnostic. Surgery mm -hmm. is diagnostic only. We're not mm -hmm. trying to cure anything. No. And sometimes it's there to diagnose and to treat. Yeah. You know that type of thing. Yeah. And sometimes it's there to palliate. You know, like we. For some, care, yeah, yeah, so like you're just trying to make someone feel better. Yeah. You know, you're not trying to cure anything. You're for the rest trying, of their days. So exactly. Like it could be have. a short period of time. You're yeah. just trying to make them feel better. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. so understanding what the goals are can, can alleviate stress. A lot of stress is not knowing what's going on. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Isn't I mean, don't you think? That's, that's all the stress I get yeah. sometimes. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, like, you know, what are we doing? If, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what, 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 yeah. What are this, we this doing? Isn't, this isn't normal. Yeah. You know, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Yeah. Now, in the, in the surgical mind, it's not what we're doing, why we're doing. They know. Yeah. It's just how are we going to do it? Yeah. That's that's, that's, the, that's a lot of the stress. Yeah. It's a how are we Absolutely. doing it? Yeah. Yeah. How are we going to get there safely? Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. But I guess along those lines, if the surgeon can communicate to the team why and what we're doing, mm -hmm. then that no longer is a question, and then everyone can be on board on the how. Yeah. If you guys are stick on the why and uh, why and what, yeah. then you're just like, okay, we're I'm all, just we're all on the same page. Yes. We know we know where the finish line yes, is. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> This was a good question I got from uh, from the community, but how do you best prepare yourself for procedures you haven't done in a long time, mm -hmm. or even or even at all? Yeah, because I, I mean, you know, we talked about MSU protocol, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> I remember I was doing a case with uh, Doctor Wood, and he mm -hmm. was he was wanting to you know repair a repair a mitral valve a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a repair that he hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I just I watched uh, a mm -hmm. few YouTube videos mm -hmm. on it the mm -hmm. night before, yeah. just just so I could get yeah. the technique right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, you you've, yeah, it is a little bit funny, but it's actually quite valuable. Yeah, quite valuable. Yeah. I start with a base layer of reading. You know, I read yeah. my surgical texts, yeah. both online stuff as well as surgical texts. So let's let, well, we could talk about robotics because robotics yeah. was something you didn't really do sure. in training at all, sure. and then you moved into robotics sure. and you started here, right? So yeah, I mean, was that a lot of text reading? No, because um, you know I had done minimally invasive lung surgery before. Yeah, you've done that. So you've I knew the vast. anatomy. Yeah, you've and uh, you know, 
Yeah, that's it surgery. Was, it was just a technical. Yeah, a technical learning, thing. learning the technical. But you know me; I've been playing video games since I was four yeah. years old. He didn't have an so issue this with is that like <laughs> this is like child's play. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it's it's that good. Yeah. You know, the controls are that amazingly yeah. intuitive it according is. to that. Yeah. So you know, it wasn't. It was just marrying my anatomy knowledge yeah. to my decades of. Yeah, hand skills, video game dexterity, video game dexterity, <laughs> and I, I strongly suggest you all you know play a lot of video games. Okay, yep, yep. at least half an hour a day. Yeah. I said it. Dr. Chung said it. Tell tell your wives or your husbands. Dr. Chung said I gotta play video games. Okay, so it really, I'm playing it video really, games. It really, really. And there's actually sense. some studies to suggest that surgeons who play at least a half an hour to an hour uh, video games a day have short, shorter OR times uh, and uh, less operative complications yeah. so it's been shown to be the, to be the case yeah so yeah so in that case it wasn't real it was just the anatomy that I already knew married with the hand you know the new technology and yeah. it didn't take long but for like procedures that I haven't done in a while I start with a base layer of reading both books and online sets and then obviously you take advantage of the uh, of YouTube of videos are you kidding me yeah it's fantastic. India, India is all about uh, putting. Yeah, up yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah, here in America, it's really hard to do because no, we have HIPAA violations and stuff yeah, like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little difficult. No, to do but, that stuff, uh, but you know, there, there, there are videos um, based in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, like for instance, I hadn't done a first rib res rib, rib resection in a while, mm -hmm. and I looked up video. There's a guy down in Arizona who does quite a number of them, right. and he put out a video. He also put out a, a video presentation yeah. of him presenting his data. You know, this is the way I do it. Patients have good outcomes. You know, so I said, okay, well, that's very reasonable. That's cool. Yeah, so um, there are a lot of resources out there, yeah. you know, so. The internet's a beautiful Oh, thing. it's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> All right, uh, last question sure. to, to wrap this video up. Mm -hmm. What what separates an exceptional tech to, to an average tech? Uh, you kind of touched on that. Yeah, like, I mean, I think there is so, uh, Someone that pays attention. Yeah. You know. So um, I think I love to, I like to divide that question into three spheres. You know, okay. the human body, the human being is composed of a body, mm -hmm. a mind, and a spirit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. your body is just keeping you in good shape, yeah. you know what I mean? And taking care of yourself, getting enough rest, not abusing yourself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, you know, um, having a, a strong, stable family life, you know, and just you know, being ready and present, yeah. ready to go. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be like the night before, you know, up till two, you know, partying a lot and, and, and hurting yourself because that translates into a potential problem down, you know, for Absolutely. that patient the next day. So treat your body right. Mind is obviously what you know, mm -hmm. okay? So if you know a case in and out, obviously, then you become a resource for someone else. And that's your training and yes. your experience throughout right. years of and, working. And, and, and you know, if you know that there's a surgery coming up, you watch those videos. Yeah. You see what's Absolutely. going on with the pa with the surgeon in yeah. there, and you say, "Oh, that's how they get around this, or they that's how they yeah. do that." Yeah. Um, you know, and if you're interested in anatomy, just Google the anatomy. You can learn the anatomy quite easily, and then yeah. you know, that's some basis of common understanding with the surgeon. You say, "How do you do this?" or, mm -hmm. or "What tool would best serve to get a, get this job done?" That type of thing. Yeah. So that's all mind. That's all knowledge. That's fun to knowledge and. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, if you feel weak in a particular procedure that's coming up, talk mm -hmm. to someone who knows. Talk to a guy that's in there all the time and say, or talk to the OR director say, listen, I'm a little bit unsure about this. Could I have, you know, uh, Jim come in with me and, and kind of scrub with me so that, you know, so we can do this a smooth, smooth way. Yeah. And if it's yeah. not too busy, you know, yeah. that type of thing. Uh, and then it's the spirit. And the way I define spirit is like, what are your motivations? You know what I mean? If your motivation is to collect a check, and to work your nine to five, yeah. you know, and to minimize the amount of work and maximize the amount of, of reward you get. Yeah. That I would say is probably okay, mm. but it's not gonna make me like, like, like look upon you no. with admiration, yeah. you know? I, I mean, if that's the kind of person you wanna be, that's fine. Yeah. But if you're the kind of guy who is driven by, you know, like, like Martha, Martin Luther King Jr. said, you know, if there's a, a street sweeper he should sweep the streets with such excellence that the heavens sing about this street sweeper. Mm. Even if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, go on out and sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Handel and Beethoven composed music. 
sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Amen. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. You know what I mean? And, and it's a mundane job, you mm -hmm. know, and, but it's a necessary job. Yeah. And but it's like put pride. But in that what you person do. is doing it, you know, yeah. like as if God Himself is watching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not like with a critical eye, yeah. but like a, an encouraging eye. You know, like yeah. That's valuable yeah. what you're doing. Absolutely. And, and and you are not valuable because you're doing it. You are valuable in and of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now show us the the quality of your value by doing a great job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you are valuable yeah. and we, we, we all agree that. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Do a great job to show us the light of your value inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it can only lead to great things. You know? <laughs> and and I'm a big, you know, like a lot of biblical principles I'm I'm big on. Like we're gonna give you a little responsibility. You know, this is a little bit of responsibility. Yeah. Take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Here's a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. And here's a little bit more. Yeah. And before you know it, you're responsible for so much, right? Yeah. And you become pivotal, right? You become so pivotal to the whole thing. You know Absolutely what I mean? Absolutely true. So um, I would, I would just start small and humble, but honest and earnest. Yeah. Honest and earnest, and you know, only good things can happen. You know what I mean? I've seen surgical techs Love become it. surgeons. Yeah. I've seen it I've with seen, my I've own eyes. Yeah. My own eyes. This person mm -hmm. has got it. Mm -hmm. And they have a love for it. They have a taste for it. Yeah. A zest for it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, 10 years later, they're a surgeon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, great things can happen. But, you know, it's... It's not, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. So, you know, you don't, ha you don't have to take it to that level. But I'm always about taking things to their epic level. As, mu as epic as they can be. <laughs> you know what I mean? And... You know, because that that's for me what makes life exciting. Yeah. But, you know, for someone else, like, let's Being say... Being like the pinnacle. You know, yeah, peak. let's say a mother, you know, with children, and, you know, that's my epic. That's the, what's epic for me. That's my life. You yeah. know, I'm here to do a quality job. Hey, fine. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's, again, something for me to learn is I can't judge everybody that way. You know, I can't make everyone a, like a fighter pilot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like an ace pilot. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Some people are there just... You know, you know, as part of their profession, and they're not, you know, they're not there to change the world. Yeah. They just want to do a good job, and yeah. you know, go home. And I get it. That's fine. That's reasonable. Yeah. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. So, wonderful advice, Dr. Chung. Thank you. All Thanks, right. guys. Good luck. Yeah. Strong work to you all. Thanks for watching, Thanks, guys. Thanks uh, for taking care of our patients. Yeah. Good for you. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.